so um, a couple of weeks went by. The doctors kept calling me to do the follow-up. They wanted to do the follow-up, wanted to do the follow-up. And I never answered the phone because I knew one thing was I didn't want to sit in a, in a, in a doctor's office for, for the last few months of my life. I also knew I didn't want to go sit in a support group with other people who were dying because I imagine that's pretty sad, you know. Yeah. Some people are either going to be excited about it and you sit there and go like, you're, dying geez, you're manic, you know, you're, you're in denial. Or there are going to be people who are going to be sitting there miserable and yeah. you don't want to be around either of those two kinds of personalities. And so I never told anybody that this was happening in my life. And so a couple of weeks went by and the doctor kept calling and kept calling. And again, the, the messages that he left were more and more urgent. In fact, at first they were the nurse calling me. And then all of a sudden the doctor, he found the time to call me. So I thought, wow, I must be pretty important that the doctor himself is calling, not one of the minions. So I, I finally agreed. I finally answered and I said, listen, I, I, I'm fine with everything. I've got everything sorted out. And they're saying, but we really, really need to see you. I'm like, okay. They said, we'll send a car for you. I'm like, send a car for me? <laughs> what type of car? Oh my goodness. I didn't realize I was this important. So I said, no, no, I can, I can drive myself. So I ended up driving myself down. And the doctor came in. They didn't even keep me waiting. So then I went in immediately right in. I'm like, this must be serious. What's worse than death? <laughs> and the doctor says, um, John, uh, there's not an easier way to say this, but I'm like, I've heard this before. <laughs> and he said, we made a mistake. Oh. Yeah. It turns I'm out so that mad. there's a guy in the observation room right next door to me. His name was John. Jesus. So when he called me John, I thought nothing of it. Because my first name happens to be John. It's a common name. So, that so I just, and even sense. though in all right. other, other interactions he called me Stephen, it just didn't register with me at all that he called me John because I just presumed. And so the guy next door, they had the charts backwards because we were in the rooms right next door to each other. Oh. Imagine being the other guy like, oh, you're going to be okay. Yeah. So it turns <laughs> out I wasn't, I, I didn't have a brain tumor. I, I was dehydrated. <laughs> water? I needed to drink more water and get more sleep because I was, I was working very hard at the time. So I thought... Okay. So the doctor again says, listen, I imagine that this is probably some very difficult news. I imagine you're very angry. And I was like, angry? Why would I be angry? This is the best news I've ever gotten in my life. <laughs> oh my I thought God. I had five half months to live. I've now got, I mean, I may only have 10 minutes for all I know once I leave here, but I, it's, it, you know, that brain tumor is it's not there. I said, I just feel bad for, for John next door because that guy, he's got five and a half months to live. And that poor bastard has just been drinking water and sleeping the past two months. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah now imagine, and imagine I had to have brought that guy in and told him what actually was going on. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it strikes me that every time I tell this story that, that John is no longer, he's no longer here. You know, he, his, his time passed. His, you know, I don't know if he had children. I don't know what his life was like at this time. But it strikes me that he's not here. But, but I am. And I, it also struck me that this doctor was just so like falling all over himself, apologizing, and I didn't get the sense that he was sorry for the, any kind of an emotional thing that he caused, but he was just terrified that I was going to sue him for this. And everything at a time, like, you messed up. It's an understandable mistake. The rooms are right next door to each other. We, have, we both have the first, the same first name. But he was so, and I know that a lot of people would hear that and go, oh, I could probably get money out of this. I could probably sue this person. I thought, damn, you read my mind. Uh... Yeah, but I just spent the last two weeks trying to figure out how to be the best person possible so that as I'm living, even if nobody ever recognizes, at least I know for myself that I'm, I'm the best possible person I can be. And I did not see how, how getting a lawyer and taking money from a person like this was going to make the world a better place. And you might think, well, it makes it better for you. Really? That's how you want it? You want money like that? You want to just like have something go wrong in your life and cash a paycheck? It sounds like you're worshiping money, man. It sounds like somebody Power. who all of a sudden has like a religious epiphany. It's like, I found God. Oh, I found money. I saw him. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much. Well, that is yeah, so much pretty much, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And so then I and then like here's what happens a lot of times. People will have these kinds of like like changes in their lives, and then things will start going right, and then they go right back to living how they used to. And yet I said, you know, it gave me a lot of focus of how best to live at this point. So I thought, well, I guess I won't go back to it. Because if that's if this is the best if I feel like I've identified the best ways to live, well then you want to keep going in those in those directions. So this is why if, if you understand this story, then you'll understand some things probably about me. Why do I talk the way that I talk? When am I going to you know? Aren't you worried you're going to offend somebody? Oh, someone's going to go online and call me names. Mm -hmm. uh, Twitter. Someone's, yeah, someone's going to go on Twitter and be like and and and, and cancel me. 
<laughs> guess I'll make another yeah, account. Oh I'm so sorry, you're right. I should not tell the truth. I should, I should live by lies. I should live by complete lies and say things that aren't true just to not offend people so that people don't call me names online. People who I'm never going to meet. People who, if, if I, who very well may have walked around me on that sidewalk that one day. I'm mean, annoyed by my very existence. I'm so worried that they're going to call me names or not go to the movies with me. Oh, that's right. They never went to the movies with me in the first place. We were never friends in the first place. And you realize that so many of us live by this thing that we're so afraid of being called something. That, and this, we're afraid of being called something that you're not. Do you sit there and worry that someone's going to come up to you and say, Santa Claus? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know? But we're so afraid of being called anything that ends in, in, a, in phobe or is for some reason today. And, and, and we, we, we feel the need to defend ourselves. So watch me goes, Santa Claus. No, I'm not Santa Claus. Don't say that. Don't say that online either. Well, unless you, you know, bend your knee and do what we want you to do, then we will definitely call you Santa Claus online. And then the elves will come find you. And it's like, that'd be cool, though. Surround myself by little people. <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah. Dang. That'd be cool. You see, I like to be around. I like to be around. see yourself. You realize that... That there, that there are greater things in yourself. You realize that, that the world's going to go on without you afterwards. And the best thing that you can maybe perhaps do is, is maximize your place in it while you're here. And that means you know, finding what's the best way to live for you. And that doesn't mean selfishly, like, that doesn't mean that nobody else matters. Because you still do have to live in a world with people. And again, perhaps the, the best thing that we can possibly do is make the world better before we leave. You don't make it worse. So many people make it worse, and they, I mean, all, some people almost seem to go out of their way to make the world a worse place. And some people will make the world a worse place just by being who they are, and not even realize that they're making the world a worse place because they just don't conceptualize that about other people. And by the way, this is one of those. This is one of the hallmarks of maturity. By the way, um, little kids, when they, when they when, I think I've told you before that the younger a kid is, and they lie to you, it indicates a higher level of intelligence. That's because they realize that you have a different psychology than, than they do. When we fail to do that, it demonstrates a, a lack of maturity. When we, when, we start, when we treat the world as though we're the only thing in it, there's a word for that, it's a narcissist. Narcissism, uh, solipsism is another uh, the, the way of thinking about that. When the world ends, so do I. I'm sorry, when I end, so does the world. I'm sorry, when I end, so does the world. When I die, the world dies as far as I'm concerned, so what do I care about what happens to it afterwards? It's, a, it's, a re, it's an inability, or at least a, a moral refusal to, to consider other people in our actions. And that doesn't mean you should live your whole life by what everybody else wants. All I'm saying is that don't make the world a worse place. You can make it better. You can make it worse. At the very least, leave it neutral when you, when you leave. And then maybe, hopefully, you can make it better. But just don't make it worse because, I mean, because <clears throat> you're not better. You're not worse, oh. but you have the ability to make it better or worse. That's quite a bit of power, if you really understand that. Mm -hmm. so. Any questions? Oh, sorry. So I guess the question is, when I was told I was going to die, was that a harsh thing? No. Yeah. It was a harsh, it appeared harsh, but didn't it turn out for the, for the better? Yeah. I think what you're going to find is that a lot of the harsh things that you're going to encounter in life you have a choice. You can either, oh my god, I'm going to sue you. Uh, I, I've been victimized. Oh my god, this is terrible. Feel bad for me, okay? I was going to die. So everybody was going to die. Eventually. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> In other words, you have a choice of being, of either, of either wallowing in the harshness of it or looking at it and saying, wow, that one harsh thing, it wasn't harsh. It was, it was, well, it was harsh, but it was only an appearance. It actually turned out to be pretty good. But I made it, I, you, know, you have to make it turn out to be pretty good. You have the ability to do that. I showed that doctor a great kindness by, 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 by not suing. And it, wasn't yeah. like, and it wasn't like, therefore, I'm a good person. No, I made the world a better place for that. I could have made it a worse a place. And, and people often will say, yeah, but you could have. Oh, God, get over this shit. Oh, you could have made somebody else's life worse. You know, just, you know, and that would have been the zero sum game. It's like, I could have made it worse because I, mine would have been better. Well, that's what happens with something like that. Yeah. And so then, what you want to do is, again, you know, hopefully make it neutral. But then it's like, well, yeah, but didn't he make your life worse? No, because it turned out to be much better. It turned out such that now I, I, he helped me, by his mistake, I discovered a better way to live. 
And so now, that, and that's a lesson that you carry throughout life with you. So maybe he made it, first off, he didn't mean it for evil. He just made a mistake. And so there was no, like, making, you know, there's no evil intent there. And so we have to get over this idea that when people do something wrong, they have an evil intent. When, you, uh, when I have a student who puts their, I mean, I have, like, what, two rules or three rules, really? Don't put your head down in class. Um, don't have your, 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 your earbuds in when I'm talking. Those are pretty simple things, and those are just like basic courtesy things, man. Like, really, someone's talking to you, and you've got earbuds in your ears, and you're supposed to believe, I'm supposed to believe that you can give half of a shit about what I have to say? If you walked up to me, and I was sitting there going, well, you're asking me for help, and telling me about how, like, you know, this one terrible thing has happened in your life, and so you need an extension, I'm just like... And then later... What? <laughs> what you say? You know, really? It's supposed to believe that, you, and yet you be taught that that's a common courtesy? Apparently. I don't think anyone sits there and, and like puts their head down and just like, fuck you, scandal. <laughs> <laughs> you know? They don't mean it for evil. They're just not thinking about whether it's good or evil. They're just living their lives, and by living their lives, they're sending that message to people. When someone cuts you off in traffic, understand, they're not going like, oh, you? <clears throat> they're cutting you off. That's right, Scanlon, get behind me. Meow. No, they made a mistake in that they missed their exit, or they're trying not to miss their exit, or they didn't see you. Like, we're so angry when people do that. You stupid son of a you got your driver. Start foaming at the mouth and turning red. And meanwhile, that person's driving, they're just like listening to their music. <laughs> they have no idea Listen to the that you exist. And by the way, even if they did know that you exist, how would they probably respond to that? Well, my bad. The same way that we all do. Oops. Because then later on, and then when someone cuts them off, <laughs> <laughs> but when and yeah, so when we, we do it, it's oh man, I just made a mistake. Maybe we should be more generous with people and more understanding about people because everybody's going through a hard battle. And then and, and again, that's different from someone who's intentionally trying to. That's a very different thing. But in terms of a person who's just living their lives, maybe maybe be more graceful to each other and maybe make the world a better place that way. This better be related. Go ahead. Yeah. Basically, when you said couldn't and shouldn't, that really kicked. That actually made me think, like, when you mention, like, decisions, what people make, like, in life, like, like, oh, you did this, but I could have done this. So it leads, like, you already went through a path, and then you look back at the second, well, the things you could have done, it leads to, to multiple paths you, sh you could have done with that decision, basically. And then it leads up to two words, I should have done it, I could have done it, and, and it leads you processing what would have happened, and it gives you a mindset to think, what would happen if I did this instead of this decision, like... What well, if I said this, when I said that, and then it leads to a mindset that either leads to something good or something bad. Like, if you, if you chose this decision, and you thought, what would happen here? And it's like, oh, the path I'm in is pretty good, so I'll just stay here and think of that, and not think about the other thing at all. Or you, or you think your decision you chose was kind of, was pretty bad, and you go to the other decision that could have been better for you, and then it leads to regret after that. That's... Yeah. And so. notice that the things that we could have done in life are always better than things that we did. Yeah. Things that we could have done in life always end up better. I'm sure some of you guys know somebody who they, they could have. I, I, this is the thing I hear so much because I was a baseball player. Oh man, like my like me, when I was playing baseball, I was getting scouted and recruited by like all these teams. And you sit there and go, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. No, seriously, man, like the Yankees send scouts out to me. I always hear these people talk about how like, the, how, like pro teams. Sent scouts out to watch them in Little League. And I'm like, uh huh. Potential. You really think that that's how that happens? <laughs> that scouts send people out to Little League fields, out down to Las Palmas to see you hitting, you know, 300 foot bombs. You know? Yeah, you Potential. Get, but you hear like them all the time, like, no, but seriously, but then, and they'll tell you like some story about how they got sidetracked, and so therefore the team's no longer scouting them, and you just sit there and go, like, now, here's the thing. Do I know that that's complete, utter, 100% bullshit. Yes. yes, because it's something yeah. I happen to know a lot about. Do I sit there and tell this person, that is complete, 100% utter bullshit? No. You just no. look at them. No, I don't need to. That person knows it's bullshit. I know it's bullshit. Do they think, and why is that person telling me the story? Because they feel bad about themselves. They feel, they feel negatively about themselves, so they're telling a story to try to make themselves feel better in the eyes of others. What's the harm in this person thinking that I see them as better than they are? If it makes them feel better, if it makes their life better, why do I have to sit there and call them out on it? So you, so you let people kind of live in that, live in the fantasy, the world that they want to create. Is it better for them? Uh, I'm not the person to tell you what's better for you in your life. I've been very clear about that since the beginning. So I'm not a role model, 
And I'm not going to come along and tell you what's better for your life. You know better for your life than I do, by far. And I'm mayor. And so, yeah, there are these things where you, you know, for him it might seem like it's a bad thing. It appears to be a bad thing. You know, I don't know if it is. It's not going to make him feel better about himself, I suppose. I, personally, I think it's better to be authentic. Because then you never have to, to worry about jettisoning people from your life. You never have to worry about being found, found out. But you know you don't have that anxiety of being caught of being caught lying. That doesn't mean you won't be accused of it. I know that I still have students who, who don't believe half the stories I tell you. I promise you they're all real, and, and you haven't heard a tenth, you know, a tenth of a percent of them. But the fact of the matter is that the same is true for you too, though. You have you guys have tons and tons of stories. You just haven't thought to tell them. And then when you do, you're going to be fascinated. So that's going to be the, that's going to fascinate people. Yeah. Because if you've gone through it, you're not that original. Meaning that if you've gone through it, other people have gone through something similar as well. Yeah. And that's when people will go, yeah, you know what, I've been... And then you kind of sit there and you kind of... And that other person might be like, oh, that's right, because this one time... And then they take over your story, and that might, that might be annoying. But it makes their life better. It makes the world a better place as far as they're... Unless you, unless you have the ego that you need to make sure that your story gets told above somebody else's. Yeah. Hey, hey, let me and then, of course, you're going to arm wrestle with them over that. But... <laughs> Think about the negative things that seem to happen in your life, and you might realize they're not so negative. They shape you if you choose to be shaped by them. They strengthen you if you choose to be strengthened by them. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? <laughs>